hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück. Ich bin's wieder, euer Emojack. Und wir gucken uns heute mal ein etwas anderes Spiel an, und zwar The Uncle Who Works for Nintendo. Ein quasi Text-Adventure, bzw. ein Text-Horror-Game soll es wohl sein. Ich habe es selber noch gar nicht angetestet, aber wir gucken mal. Und ich würde sagen, wir fangen auch gleich mal an. Das ist der Startbildschirm. Es geht nicht in die volle Breite, also nicht wundern, wenn es links und rechts schwarz ist. Es ist... Ja, Browser optimiert, leider nicht auf 16 zu 9, also rechts, links bleibt ein schwarzer Balken, das gehört leider so. This game makes extensive use of sound. Play, play with headphones for the best experience. Ja, machen wir. Occasionally it may take control of your browser. It is not optimized for mobile, for content and trigger warning, click here. Das sparen wir uns jetzt. Und wir fangen an mit The Uncle Works for Nintendo. Äh, who works for Nintendo? You are 11 years old. What is your best friend's name? Ja, mit 11 war definitiv mein bester Kumpel noch ein Kerl, also Andrew, Ashley, Brandon, Dave, Jessica, Megan. Nachdem ich einen sehr guten Kumpel habe, der Dave heißt oder halt David, entschließen wir uns mal für Dave. Your best friend Dave has invited you to a sleepover at his house this weekend. You've been friends since first grade, so asking your mom is basically only a formality. Und jetzt... Ah uh, ja, jetzt können wir hier die zwei Varianten auswählen. Ähm ja, aber trotzdem, ich übernachte nicht bei dem, ohne Mama gefragt zu haben. Wir fragen Mama. You've never confirmed this, but you suspect the babysitter may charge extra when there are two kids. You sometimes feel like staying somewhere else is the only way you can help out. Ja. Your best friend Dave. Das heißt, es funktioniert nicht. At his house. Okay, verstehe ich nicht ganz, aber dann ist es doch eine Formalität. Also. Ach so, das war nur die Erklärung und jetzt haben wir es gemacht. Okay. On Friday night, you're home for only a few hours. Long enough to pack, get in a fight with your younger sister, pack some more and watch some TV. At six sharp, you're standing on the sidewalk outside Dave's house while your mom idles in her car nearby. She leans out the window to you. You behave yourself, okay? She says, as always. I'll be at work, but if anything happens, you call me. Ja, typisch Mama. <laughs> Und nachdem man das im, in diesem Alter schon so langsam ein bisschen nervig findet, wir seufzen. Okay, Mom. I'll pick you up tomorrow at three, she says, again as usual. But then she pauses, looking up at the sky, which has been overcast throughout the day. If you play outside, she adds, be careful, it's probably gonna rain. Mit elf. Ja, komm, man kann Mama schon mal eine gute Nacht Bussi geben, oder? Also ein Tschüss Bussi. Machen wir. Komm, sieht ja keiner. After part... Now, after you part, your mom drives down the street, disappearing around the corner. You turn back to Dave's house. The lights inside are glowing warmly. You can see Dave waving at you from his bedroom on the second floor. Head inside. It is 6 p.m. Dave's mom meets you just inside. Hello, she says. Dinner will be ready in just a few more minutes. But you can drop stuff off in the den. You and Dave are camping out here tonight. Ja, andere Mütter sind ja sowieso immer die cooleren, deswegen. Cool! You drop your sleeping and overnight bags in the corner of the den and then pause to take a look around. Behind the couch, a grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a set of patio doors on the far side of the room, you can see the sky is just as grey as it was when your mom left. Framed pictures line the walls, and over the dark fireplace hangs a monstrous pair of antlers from a buck that Dave's dad shot years ago. And of course, there's the big screen TV. Dass die Kumpels auch immer so riesen TVs haben müssen, war bei mir irgendwie auch so. Sometimes it makes you uncomfortable how much nicer Dave's house is than yours. Anyway. You drop your sleeping in overnight bags in the corner of the den and then pause to take a look around. Behind the couch, a grandfather clock is ticking softly. Das hatten wir doch gerade schon. Hm. Ja, ja. 
And of course, there's a big screen TV. Yeah, good. Dave entered the room while you weren't paying attention. And he now stands in the doorway, smiling expectantly. Are you ready for dinner? He asks. Sure. Dinner passes quickly. Tonight's meal is spaghetti and meatballs, one of Dave's favorite meals, as his mother, po mother points out while piling a, a helping on your plate. Dave's father cracks a beer and jovially interrogates you about how much trouble you and Dave are getting into at school. Was? Niemals. Dessert is heaping bowls of ice cream drizzled in chocolate sauce. You can't even finish yours. The gr grandfather clock in the den chimes. Ich will mal wissen, was das mit dem Bier auf sich hat. Wir klicken Mark auf Cracks a Beer. Wait, there wasn't beer at all. That's a glass of lemonade. Why would you even think it was beer? Dave's father doesn't drink alcohol. You're quite certain of that fact, now that you've remembered it. Well, whatever. Ach, wie cool. Wir haben jetzt quasi seine Erinnerung nochmal durchforscht und er erzählt eigentlich nur die Geschichte. Ja, yeah, whatever. Dann diesmal the grandfather clock in the den chimes. Woo. You go along now, says Dave's mom, smiling from her side of the table. We'll clean up in here. Let's go get the TV ready, says Dave. The two of you will leave the dining room and head upstairs. Dave's room is immense. You stay in the den because the TV is larger there, but there's a sizable one here, flush with the wall opposite the full-size bed. Ja, yeah, nicht schlecht. We'll take the 64 down first, says Dave. Heading towards his TV and opening the entertainment center cabinet. Ja, nicht schlecht. Der hat echt eine ordentliche Bude, wie es aussieht. Typischer rich kid. <laughs> It's his prerogative, of course. He gets to choose what you play it first, usually. But as Dave begins unhooking the cords of the N64 from the TV, you catch sight of the other things he has in there. Na, gucken wir doch mal, was er da noch drin hat. All the major stuff. An old SNES, a PlayStation, a Dreamcast, sehr geile Konsole im Übrigen. But some other things too, things you don't really recognize. A large black box with green highlights, a smaller purple one, strange white and yellow tower, with what look like gloves resting on hooks on either side. A compact white one. Wir wollen natürlich wissen, was es ist. What are those? Dave looks to the clutter in the cabinet. Oh yeah, he says. They're pretty cool. I can't show them to you though. They're still secret. I promised my uncle. Of course, you suddenly remember. His uncle. The uncle who works for Nintendo. In the corner, the grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a nearby set of pressure doors, you can see it's getting quite dark. Framed pictures line the walls. Dave is parked in front of the large TV, playing something on the Nintendo 64. Talk to Dave, watch Dave play, go to the bathroom, go to the kitchen, think about Dave's uncle. Wir gucken mal, was für Bilder da sind. You walk around the perimeter of the den, inspecting the pictures idly. Most of them are family portraits from years past. Dave cradled lovely between his mother and father, or any one of the three on their own. A happy, tidy family. Look for pictures of Dave's uncle or do something else. Wir gucken, ob wir Bilder von Dave's Onkel finden. You don't find any, not one. The only picture here are of Dave and his parents. You don't know why that makes you feel uneasy. Time passes. In the corner, the grandfather talk clock is ticking softly. Through a nearby set of patient doors, you can see it's getting quite dark. Frame pictures line the walls. Dave is parked in front of the large TV, playing something on the Nintendo 64. Da waren wir schon. Wir gucken ihm ein bisschen beim Zocken zu. You try to relax by watching Dave play a game. After a moment though, he looks at you. You play this one, he says. Na dann, zocken wir eine Runde. This game is kind of spooky. Your character just has a flashlight and is running around in some underground tunnels. Occasionally you hear what sounds like digging. You don't like it. Dave is watching you and seems to be amused how, at how uncomfortable you are. You don't say anything, 
so you don't look weak. You play for a while, even though that doesn't seem to be an ending. The clock chimes. You're in the den. So, Tex ist wieder der Bekannte. Wir gucken uns mal die Grandfather Clock an. It's eight. Ah, okay. Er sagt jetzt einfach nur die Uhrzeit. Wird also langsam. Ah ja, hier steht auch Patient as you can see, it's fully dark outside. Think about Dave's uncle. Begin with Mew. You didn't believe him at first when Dave came to school one day and told you, told you he had finally caught Mew. Prove it, he said. So he pulled out his Game Boy, Game Boy and showed you. And there it was. Mew. The 151st Pokemon available only to players at promotional events. Somehow unlocked at Dave's game. It's really strong, he said. It chaos every enemy in one hit. Was ja irgendwie ein bisschen langweilig dann wird. Aber okay. Dave demonstrated his claim, this claim at recess. When you and some other friends link Game Boys to do battle. You were the first one down. No one else got in a, a single hit on Dave's Mew. You asked how Dave managed to get it. No one else will fragen mal, wer der Rest so war. Wer war denn noch dabei? In a few days, everyone had quit playing Pokemon at recess. The allure had faded. You asked how Dave managed to get it. Oh, my uncle got a job at Nintendo, said Dave. You were walking home together past one of the construction crews. Dave still lived next door to you at the time. Construction crews? Immer interessant. There had been a storm not too long ago. Trees were down all over town. Buildings had collapsed. You were still staying at an intersection with Dave as a truck rumbled by, loaded up with wrecked tree trunks. What a bad storm. Oh, he also got me this new Game Boy, said Dave pulling it out of his pocket. You hadn't noticed it earlier, but yes, Dave now had a sleek new Game Boy color. Until today, he had one of the old ones, a big gray brick like yours. This one's a special edition, said Dave. Isn't it cool? You agreed. You snap out of your reflections. Okay, we sind wieder da. Wir holen uns mal was zu trinken oder essen. Wir gucken mal in die Küche. Go to the kitchen. Passing through the empty dining room, you enter the kitchen. Which is also deserted right now. Gucken wir mal in den Kühlschrank. There are a few things here. Soda, cold pizza, milk, a water pitcher. Of course we want to have soda. Kinder mögen immer Cola. You grab your snack and exit the kitchen. You head back to the den. The clock chimes. You're in the den. Dave's mother bustles into the room, holding a large ceramic bowl filled with popcorn under her arm. How are you kids doing? She asks. Good, says Dave, his eyes not moving from the television. I hope you're having fun, says Dave's mom. Here's some popcorn extra butter. She places it on the floor by Dave. Almost immediately, Dave is shoveling popcorn into his mouth. Meanwhile, his mother smiles first at him and then back at you. There are sodas in the kitchen if you get thirsty, she says. And some pizza from the other night, if you get hungry. Wir bedanken uns, wir sind höflich. Bei anderen Müttern bedankt man sich, wenn sie einem was Nettes tun wollen. She looks at Dave. Your father's gone to bed, I'll be there soon, myself. I want you to keep, I want you two to keep quiet, all right? Yes, mom, Dave says tiredly. Oh, and before I forget, she adds, your uncle called. He suddenly has some business here in town tomorrow. But he's driving in early, he'll be here around midnight. Kommt er dann zu uns nach Hause? For the first time, Dave stopped playing his game, stops eating popcorn and turns to look at his mother. Okay, he says. I want you two to welcome him in. He'll be very tired and very hungry, so offer him something to eat before he goes to bed. Okay, mom. Good night, kids. And with that, she's gone. Und wir sind die einzigen, die noch wach sind. In the corner, the grandfather clock is ticking softly. Through a nearby set of pager doors, you can see it's fully dark outside. Also, ich denke, dunkler wird's nicht mehr als fully dark. Watch Dave. Play haben wir schon gemacht. Remember your own Mew. Wir hatten selber mal eins. Das interessiert mich, wie wir da rangekommen sind. You got your own Mew. Eventually. 
Another friend had a game shark, which you borrowed one day. You spent the entire night unlocking every Pokemon you couldn't obtain in your copy of the game or hadn't yet traded for, including Mew. It didn't one it KO most enemies. It was incredibly weak and you shamefully cheated the game further to make it strong enough. It even looked different from Dave's. You asked him why. Ich will wissen warum. What? He said. That had been here, in the den. Oh, that thing? It had been a while since anyone talked about Pokemon. Well, my uncle got me a special edition Mew first of all, he said, smirking a little, but not looking away from the PlayStation game he was playing. That's why mine looked different. Second of all, mine can one-hit KO because it's the real Mew. You asked what he meant by that. Just what I said, Dave replied. You cheated and you got a fake Mew. So of course there'd be problems, glitches and junk. You felt your cheeks red redden. But not me, Dave said. I got a real Mew. And only me. My brother was so jealous. Dave's brother. What about him? Why does remembering that comment make you feel uneasy? You snap out of your reflections. Hm. Komisch. Aber auch nicht so wirklich das, was man sich den besten Vor Freund vorstellt. Wobei, hatten wir das nicht alle? Irgend so ein Kumpel, der die ganze Zeit nur geprallt hat mit allem, was er Tolles hat, was ihm die Eltern gekauft haben. Naja, so jemand hatten wir wohl alle. Dann fragen wir ihn mal zu den Uncle Visit. So, why is your uncle coming? Oder, your uncle stays with you when he visits? Jo. Yeah, Dave says nonchalantly. He lives pretty far away and so he just drops by. Isn't that a little weird? Dave gives you a look you don't like very much. How would you know, he asks. You don't even have an uncle. Ja, da wollen wir glaube ich nicht weiterhin. Don't pursue the topic further. You drop the conversation in silence. Bowl of popcorn. You grab a handful of popcorn. It's buttery and delicious. Bisschen was gegessen haben wir auch. Getrunken haben wir auch. Mm. Wir sprechen mal mit Dave. What do we like to talk about? School, games, ask if Dave thinks the storm. The storm will be as bad as the last one and never mind. Natürlich erstmal über Spiele. Das beste Thema. For a while you and Dave talk about the game on TV. It's not one you're familiar with and Dave explains the elaborate system in some detail. An hour passes. The clock chimes. You're in the den. It begins raining outside. Through a nearby set of patio doors, you can see it's dark and rainy. Hat sich also ein bisschen was geändert, ansonsten alles gleich. Hm. Ich frage nochmal zum Onkel. Vielleicht weiß er, warum er das. Dave shrugs. Business. But I thought he worked for Nintendo. Oder what sort of business? But I walked, thought he worked for Nintendo. He does, says Dave. Frowning, but not looking away from the TV screen. He's really important there. Does Nintendo have a lot of business here? Then what does Nintendo have to do here? Wenn wir in irgendeiner Kleinstadt sind, in der nichts von Nintendo ist, warum? Dave pauses the game and turns toward you, visibly agitated. How should I know? I don't work for them. Right now he's not quite yelling, but you think if you keep pressing the subject, he might. I'm not sure I believe you about your uncle. Na, wir wollen hier keinen Streit losbrechen, wenn wir bei dem pennen wollen. Sorry, I was just curious. And you drop the conversation in silence. Wir gehen mal Pipi machen, nachdem wir was getrunken hatten. Here to the bathroom down the hall from the den. There's a shower, a linen closet and a toilet. Wir gehen mal auf die Toilette. You go to the bathroom and wash your hands. Are you done here? It's a linen closet filled with large fluffy towels and washcloths. You're not sure why you looked in there. Now, ich wollte mir die Hände abtrocknen. I think we're finished. Duschen wollen wir jetzt nicht. Go back. You head back to the den. Oh, ein bisschen Popcorn. What do you like to talk about? Wir sprechen nochmal mit ihm. Oh, über den Sturm, was er denkt. 
Do you think the storm will be as bad as the one we had before? I don't like the sound of the wind. You remember that storm we had that tore down all the trees? Naja, dann, sind, dann, dann lacht er uns wieder aus. Das ist einer der Kumpels, vor dem man keine Schwäche zeigen darf. Also fragen wir einfach das hier. I don't know what you're talking about, says Dave. You don't remember? Remember what? The storm. It happened a few weeks ago. It was huge. It took down trees. I actually forgot until tonight. There was this huge storm a few weeks ago, I think. Na, wenn er so groß war, dann wissen wir es doch noch. Dave shakes said. If it was important, I'm sure I would have remembered it, he says. You fall silent. Okay, komisch. Und wir quatschen nochmal ein bisschen über die Schule. You begin by talking about a mutual acquaintance who moved away, but Dave quickly changes the topic. An hour passes. Ja, Schule ist wohl nicht so seins. The clock chimes, you're in the den. Wie viel Uhr ist es denn jetzt? Elf. Oh, bald kommt der Vater. Äh, der Onkel. Um zwölf sollte er hier sein. Dann gucken wir ihm nochmal ein bisschen beim Zocken zu und dann... You grit your teeth. My uncle will be here soon, says Dave, looking at the clock. You knew that, of course. Dave smiles at you. You wanna play one more before he gets here? Na klar. Natürlich. Sure. For quite a while, you half-heartedly wander around the map in golden eye. <laughs> Cooles Spiel. While Dave repeatedly headshots you. Mm -hmm. The clock chimes. You're in the den. The grandfather clock chimes the hours. Dave suddenly looks up from the 64. It's time, he says. Time for what? Someone knocks at the door. That's him, says Dave, standing up. I should go let him in. As he leaves the den, you realize how you could follow, but a part of you really feels like being scars for a bit. Wir folgen ihm mal. The knocking continues persistently as you follow Dave to the front of the house. Outside the pebbled glass of the front window, you can see a tall, dark shadow. Dave goes to the door, undoes the dead bolt and cracks it open. You can come in, he says to whoever stands out there on the porch, then looks over his shoulder at you. Sorry, he says. Before you can ask what there was to be sorry about, the door slams open. The uncle who works for Nintendo. Was zur Hölle ist gerade passiert? Twine Game by Michael Lutz. Original art by Kimberly Parker. Abstract backgrounds made with Ecosa by MCC. Scripts and CSS resources by Lern, Arnott and Tori Hoag. Sound credits, inspirations, endings. Wir haben Undefined Error unlocked. Interessant. Okay, ich habe keine Ahnung, was das war, aber wir haben schon mal ein Ende gesehen und ich würde sagen, das war's für die erste Folge. Wenn es euch interessiert hat oder Spaß gemacht hat, schreibt es mir in den Kommentaren. Wir gucken mal, ob wir auch die anderen Enden noch anlocken können. Ähm, ich bin gerade noch irgendwie vollkommen verwirrt. Der Onkel ist auf jeden Fall, wie man schon anfangs gemerkt hat, nicht so nett und cool, wie man eigentlich erwartet hat. Was auch immer das war. Okay. <lacht> ich bin verwirrt. Ich hoffe, ihr auch. Ich hoffe, ihr hattet Spaß. Ich hatte es auf jeden Fall. So Twine Games sind eine interessante Sache. War mein erstes. Schreibt mir was in die Comments. Lasst mir ein Like da. Lasst mir ein Abo da auch sehr gerne. Und wir sehen uns beim nächsten Mal. Bis dahin. Macht's gut. Ciao.